Hello friends, it's good to see you again. We're going to be painting these flowers on this stone and we're going to use a pen at the end to doodle the leaves and around the flowers to make it look really sharp. Let's go over the supplies that we're going to be using. This is on a stone that I made from a mold with the Happy Dotting Company. And it comes out like this. I have a video on how to make these stones, but if you don't have the stone or the supplies to make one, you can use any rock. You can use a canvas, you can use a coaster, a metal plaque, a wood plaque. Just make sure your paints are compatible with the items that you're painting. The colors that I'm using today, high gloss Duraclear, which may change to resin art. We'll see that at the end of the video. I have turquoise, spa blue, Algerian crimson, purple pizzazz, lilac meadow, plantation pine, leaf green, gecko green, cadmium yellow, pure gold. You'll need some clean water. And then I use an eraser sometimes when I outline the flowers with the pencil. I make sure that my eraser will erase the pencil marks from this paint that I'm using. The doodle work will be done with a Microperm Pen 05 and a Microperm Pen 01. These are from Sakura. The brushes that I use is any inexpensive brush to do the base coat. A large flat brush will be your easiest and give you good coverage. The flowers and leaves I'll be painting with the number six snap round brush. This is a Princeton and I'll be using a number two snap round brush. They do come to a point and that will help you with some of the detail and to get nice even smooth lines. I use these glasses. They're 2.5 magnifiers and I just clip them onto my glasses so I can see. There's the stone. I have one dark chuck <laughs> one dark chocolate covered peanuts. It's organic and that'll be my comfort food. This coffee cup is ready to go. We're going to use this spa blue to paint the base coat on the stone. It will take two coats. So I'm going to use the flat brush and just put this paint on. These stones are so smooth. They're satisfying to paint. There's something special about that. Now I need it to dry so I'm going to use my little blow dryer so I can speed up the process a little bit. It'll dry it in just a matter of seconds actually. So here's the second coat and this is all that it's going to need. It'll be finished after this because this paint has excellent coverage. I'm going to dry that, turn it over, and I'm going to paint the back side. And since it's a handmade stone, I do paint the whole thing. I don't leave any of the stone showing. It has a couple little brush strokes that do show because the stone is so smooth. So I smooth them out with a shop towel and it gives it a satin sheen, super smooth finish. And here I have my compass. It's a cheap compass. I have the pencil already inserted. This is just a chalk pencil. And this stone has a dot in the center of it and it helps you so when you're putting your compass on you don't have to fight to find the center of the stone. And I'm going to put the first line along the edge and then the second one is going to be a little bit further down. This will be for the border that we paint. Can you see those lines there? Now, Alzerian Crimson is the color that I'm going to do the border. And I'm going to be using a flat brush that I didn't introduce at the beginning. It's a small flat brush. It's a number two. And this one's not an expensive brush by any means. But it's about the width of this border. And so I can put it literally flat and just start painting my way around. It 
it's going to take two coats of this Alzerian Crimson. And if you go out of the lines, make it a little bit crooked, which I do occasionally, even painting this stone, you just go back over with the light blue and touch it right up. So anything that I did out of the lines, I just leave it for right now and I continue painting. This will dry pretty quickly now that we're painting acrylic on acrylic. It dries quicker than when you're painting the original first coat. So here's the second coat of the Alzerian Crimson. I want it to be nice and rich. And we're going to use gold. This is pure gold, and I'm going to use a fine lining brush. Nope, actually it's my number two round. And I am going to paint on kind of a thick line all the way around the top and the bottom of this. If you have trouble doing lines or it doesn't want to work, they do have gold pens out there. Just make sure it's a paint pen or an alcohol-based pen because other ones have a tendency to smear when you're putting on your acrylic finish or the varnish at the end. This is why it's important for your number two round to come to a point. And I need a little more spa blue because I'm going to do a little bit of touching up to make these really smooth lines. One thing about the acrylic paints is it's so easy to go back over and fix any mistakes that you made or to change colors if you don't like the colors that you're using. And there we go. We're ready to do the next step. Oh yes, I have to put some dots on. So I'm using a little popsicle stick. You can use anything that's round and flat, but you want it to fit in between the two gold lines and not to go where it touches either of the lines when you're going around. So I simply start dotting. I re-dip the stick before every single dot so they will all be the same size. I don't know how, but it always seems to work out in the end. If I do see that I'm running out of space, I'll put them a little bit closer together or farther apart. And you can't see the difference. It always seems to work out. So I drew the flower on, but it's not very dark. So I am going to outline them one more time so you can see them. The flower in the center is your main flower. So it's going to be on top of all the other flowers, and it is just a little bit larger. The top flower is at an angle, so the petals will be more elliptical, and the center will be like a half moon. Three of the flowers are going to be overlapping the border a little bit. I don't do the leaves yet. I'll just paint them later where they look good. Here's the final picture. I hope you can see it okay. Now I'm going to erase these lines back and make them light again so they don't show through the paint. Let's start with the lilac meadow and we're going to fill in all of the flowers with this color. I'm going to use the number six round. We're just going to paint them in Nothing special at this time. The ones that are going over the borders, you might have to put a coat or two to get it to cover. The purple covers really well. It's the green that you have to do 
like three coats at least to cover the borders. Oh, there's the flower bud. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of white. I'm going to take a tiny bit of this white and mix it with some of that purple to make a lighter shade. This will go on the left side of each of the flower petals. We're going to start blending. Now, this paint dries darker than when it goes on. Right now, it's the color that I wanted it, but it kept drying a shade darker. So you'll keep seeing me adding more white to the petals. So if you want to make it lighter when it dries, take a look at it and see how, how you feel about it. My purple pizzazz was very difficult to work with. It was a little bit more of a oily consistency. It blended well, but I had a hard time getting it to be as dark as I wanted it to be. They don't have to be perfectly smooth because when you add the doodle art with the pen, everything will just look really great. So this doesn't have to be a perfectly smooth finish. I just cover the whole petal with the lighter purple and then blend back into it the dark. And it has to be wet paint, a wet paint for it to blend. If that light purple dries, it's not going to blend very well. If it does dry, just go ahead and add a little bit more of the light purple and blend the dark purple into it again. The Alzerian Crimson is going to go around the center and it's going to have a jagged edge. I do put two coats on each one to make it vibrant and to match the border. Then we'll add this yellow right into the center. And I put it on real thick. It gives it a little dimension. The spice tan, I'm going to put little dots on the left, on the right side, and that will give it some shading effects. And now we're going to finish the rest of the flowers. I'm going to paint them with you. So I do have this bed up so you don't have to like sit for an hour and watch me do this. This stone did take me probably close, not quite, two hours total time to do. Um, if shading's a little bit new for you, it might take you a little bit longer. And remember, the shading doesn't have to be perfect. It just lighter on one side, darker on the other. Those look pretty good. Alzerian Crimson in the center. Two coats. Bright yellow. This one is going to be the half moon. There, you can see it here. That makes it look like it's more at an angle. All right, and we'll just keep going and finish the rest of these. I hope that everything's going okay for you. These are the times that you just sit back and enjoy. Do something that's fun and new. Get away from all of the news. You want to shade the petal when it's underneath another flower petal also. So you see that one petal that I did right there and it's shaded next to the flower petal. Makes it look like it has a shadow on it. There I am adding a little bit more light to it. But it kept drying darker than I wanted it to. I never did go back and fix that, but I still think it turned out okay. Okay, there's three more flowers to go. Don't forget to put the shading in the yellow while it's still wet.
make it dark underneath that flower petal again and you want to make it dark on the left side too there we go so you go over it a time or two it won't happen in your very first transition of adding the dark to the light. It takes about two times at least to blend it really smooth. Get the center of that flower going. I know I turn the rock around a lot. I like to keep my hand painting down towards me all of the time and not necessarily have to push my brush strokes up into the flower. I like to pull my brush strokes down towards me. So that's why I keep turning the stone. almost done with these put the center of that flower on now later on I do put the same Alzerian crimson at the base of the little flower bud I didn't do it here but you could do it now if you wanted to we're going to go ahead and use this gecko green and start making our stems they're not real thin This is the base of the flower bud, and I'm going to get the leaf green, and I am going to put a little shading on the side, on the right side of each one of these and underneath that flower base. That just gives it some dimension. Now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to the gecko green to make it even lighter and this is what we're going to use for the leaves and this one's going to take several coats because it's going over the border so i'm going to go ahead and paint some more leaves while that's drying and then i'll put another coat on i'm just putting the leaves in the places where i think that they will look good i am shading the left side with leaf green Again, that doesn't have to be perfect because when you put the black on with the pen, it's going to not even hardly be noticeable. So if you didn't even shade it, that would be fine. And I wound up going back over all of the sides that didn't have the ink drawn on with light green again anyway. So this part here in the shading, you don't have to worry too much about. Later on when I am doing, after I do the ink on the leaves, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Now this one's going to take several coats, so it's got to dry. So I'm just going to leave it for a few minutes. Paint the next one. And going over the border will pull the picture out and make it stand out. I'm going to add one more little leaf in there. And here I'm just kind of touching up. I am making the dark green darker on the left side. You could skip this step really if you wanted to. I didn't realize when I made the lines that it was going to change. the way that I wanted the flowers to look. Here's the 01 Secura pen. My 05 didn't work, so I wound up using this one for all of the outlining that we do and for all of the leaves. And just outline everything. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, 
what you're seeing here, I went pretty fast. I just did the outline. All the petals, all the stems, all the Azerian crimson, the center of the flowers, and the petals. It's already making it look pretty cool. I really like this effect a lot. I'll go back and finish up this leaf. Needed a couple more coats. And after it dried, I outlined it. it dried pretty quickly. We have a couple more flowers to outline. And I'm also going to widen the black around the right side where the shading is on these flower petals. And watch as this goes, how it makes them look. I'm just making it thicker there on the right side. See, doesn't that look pretty cool? And if you do make a mistake with this pen, your paint will cover it, and that'll be a good thing. Okay, let's get these last two flowers with their borders done. And we'll make them thicker on the right side where the shading is. Put a line down the center of every single leaf. And we are almost done. Love that black ink on there. That's how it's going to look. Now let's start putting lines on one side of the leaf. A thin line, a thick line, another thin line, two thin lines. There's no pattern here. I just filled it in. I made these leaves also a little bit thicker here and there just to make them stand out. See? The first two I put the little lines on the top and there's a couple of them where I put the lines on the bottom. There I made the lines a little bit thicker right there. I think it helps them stand out against the stems that way. <laughs> Put that Elzerian crimson in there so it can dry and then I can outline it too. One more leaf. And there you have it. Don't forget that Alzerian crimson on the little flower bud. Now, going to get some pure gold. It's the same gold that we did the dots 
and the border width. And I'm going to put a line down the side of the center of each one of these leaves. And it's hard for you to see the paint on this. It just didn't show up. But hopefully in a minute you'll be able to see it. You could see that one. every single leaf right next to the black line in the center I put another line of gold that also helps it to pull in the border I put the dots on all the Alzerian crimson I used a brush you can use a toothpick you can use the tip of a pencil or a pen dip it in and just dot all of the Alzerian crimson that also pulls the border into the picture and makes everything fit well together Uh, it's too blurry there. Here we go. Now, that's when I decided to go ahead and make each side of the leaf that didn't have the black lines brighter. So the ones that had the shading on that side, it's still okay. And it worked out pretty good and that's the final stone now here you can't really see the shading I do have just the varnish on it and that was the best lighting that I could get but I hope you enjoyed doing this painting go ahead and hit subscribe and like if you like this video it helps me out and I hope you have a really wonderful day thank you bye